Hello, it's Sarah. I'm at my desk. I wanted to show you something. This is a peperomia. I shared this pot that I painted. It was a class that I took at Creative Innovations and in Painting on Facebook. It's a terracotta pot, and I just put a little design on it. And then I got to thinking. My peperomia, it's in a square um, nursery pot. It fits in there pretty good. So I thought, I'm going to macrame a plant hanger to go with the pot. And that's what I did. I had these, these are like a copper uh, pipe bead. Had them in my stash and I thought, well that matches the terracotta color. Put a wooden ring and voila. Am I filming? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to hang this up and I'm going to gather up some supplies and I'm going to make a wicker, no. It's called um, jute twine. I'm going to use jute to make a little planter for this little guy that I just propagated. I put it in soil. Um, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Forgot about this guy. So, you know, heat this little, this is about the size. So see, let me see if I can. It's very small. This is only like a three inch little pot that I painted. So that's what's happening is I'm inspired. I'm, I'm making little macrame and plant combinations. So I'm going to show you a bunch of them that I've done, but I feel like I can make this little one sitting at my desk. I have this little, these clips hooked up here. I'm going to move the camera closer. All right. And I'll be able to show you guys, um, how to do this super simple little plant hanger. Okay. So I'm going to use jute today. So you don't need any fancy rope. This macrame rope I've ordered on Amazon. It's not hard to find, and I think they even have it at um, Hobby Lobby now. They are selling um, macrame supplies at Hobby Lobby. So, But today I'm going to use jute twine because all crafters have to have jute twine in their stash, or if not, their husbands have it. Um, I'm going to do probably... We're going to do another three arm, so three, one, two, three. You, you need four pieces of rope to tie the knots. So we're going to go four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, half that, so it's six. I need six ropes that we're going to half and half and be able to make our macrame. So I'm going to just do one body length, so watch. So see, I'm gonna, I have to put this back a little. I did this in my other tutorial. Um, so I'm going to take, take the end of the, and just spread my arms out. Oh wow, I had a piece right there. So if I bend it in half, it's going to be approximately, and I have a um, 30 inches, and that should give us plenty of room. So I'm going to need six of these. Because when we double it in half, I'll have 12, and th we'll be able to make three arms, because three times four. So I'm going to go off camera, and all right, or I'll just do it right here. Well, I got hooked on my plant already. So I'm going to need six of them. So that's one. I have a little knot. Two. Three. Wait, let me fold it in half. Four. Five. Six. And Ginny is coming in here. She hears me talking. She thinks I'm so exciting. Okay. So, oops, I need to cut. So there's little loops, so I'm just going to cut them. Go down the other side. And for this macrame, I'm not going to do a gathering knot at the top. So let me just show you what I mean. This little knot right here, the way I did it, it's called a gathering knot. So I just put the ropes over through the, this is just a, a split key ring. It's, I'm going to use one today too. And I did a gathering knot. We're not doing that today, so don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm going to change it. I'm going to do it so much easier. 
So let me double check I have enough ropes. I don't want to not have enough ropes. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So I'm just going to even up the ends. They don't have to be perfect at all. So in other words, they look something like that. I'm going to take this split ring and I'm going to stick all of the bent ones through there. Put my finger through and then I'm going to grab and pull the ends through. Oh, didn't work. <laughs> I have to hold on to the ring, sorry. So now, and if there's any really wonky ones, you can even them up, but kind of want to pull it up. It's going to be a little bit of, dang it. You know, look, I don't even need to put it through if I just pull it like this. That is so strange. I didn't know that. Anyway, once you get it on there, um, it's not going anywhere. But right now, it seems like it just could fall off. So I'm just straightening. I'm just pulling the ends to tighten the knot. Just kind of pulling it. Like this one seems really loose. So I'm going to try and find where he is and pull him tighter. Got it. This wasn't as hard <laughs> when I did when I did it before. All right, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but your ring is hooked on now. And if you don't like the way that looks, you can just use um, a gathering knot. So I'm gonna try and move the camera because I have these little um, 3M hooks right here. And I'm gonna use my uh, thing so I can see what I'm shooting. Take this off, it's just distracting. And use this hook. I think we're going to be good. So I want to split it into three arms. So I need four ropes. One, two, three, four. I'm going to do one, two, three. I'm just picking, grabbing ones that are naturally kind of where I want them, and then I'll do these three. You know what? I want to do a front four instead. I'm going to pick the four most forward ones, and this will just be the front. And I'm going to tie a square knot. Maybe I'll zoom in and give you one square knot tutorial. Um, let's just go, like, right up here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to add any beads to this one. So what you want to do, you have your four ropes. I'm going to try and zoom in. You're going to take your, these two are your working ropes, and these two are what we're going to tie the, the knot around. So you're going to make a loop like that, like a number four, and go across all of them, all three of them. Then you're going to take your last one and put it around the front and go behind and pull it through. And I want it to stay right here. Now, I could pull it all the way up. I can let it, you can, there's a lot of ways you can do, like, make it like things stick out whatever stuff but I'm just gonna make it around what's that like two inches down and then you finish it so I'm gonna take this side this time and go across all three then I'm gonna take this one and go around and behind and that's how you finish it and I'm pretty sure you could start on either side I just happen to always start on the left and as you tighten it it'll stay and I'm going to do that on all three, so I'm going to keep it even. So let's see, one, two, three, four. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Now, I mean, it depends. You, you might want to keep, it's, no one's going to look at it that closely. I'm just doing it to match that little look. I just transplanted the, oh, oh, this guy. This is called Tradescantia. And I propagated this from the mother plant and put them in water and they got lots and lots of um, very thin roots and I planted it in a nice loose well draining soil and we'll see what happens we'll see but it is in just in this cute little terracotta pot 
and I just thought a jute little guy would be so cute with that, so that's what I'm doing. All right, so where was I? I have to, oh, nope, wait, I found it. Okay, and then I'm going to finish it. Now, wait, I want it to be the same height as that one, so I'm going to finish it. And maybe we'll add a bead. I think I'll add a bead to it. I wasn't going to add beads or anything. But you know what? It's so easy, and I have them. It doesn't take much effort or time to do. So I'm just making sure it's the same height as the other arms and finish that square knot. It's just the only thing about working with jute is it's a little messier because it is a... Um, a natural fiber so it has little you know it breaks and it's just a little messier but it's not that messy all right do I want to add a I'm just gonna look at this to see I think I do want to add a bead so I have this um, assorted beads I think I got these at Hobby Lobby but I, I don't I have no idea because it could have been I think Walmart it could have been Walmart. This looks like something Go Create. I've never heard of that brand, Horizon Group. There are three different colors of wood stain colors, and I think I'm just going to use these. I could use all of them, but there's like this color, and there's three different sty oops, styles. I caught it. So there's this ribbed one, round, a plain round, and a square. And I like this color because it's kind of terracotta-y. I don't know. I think it plays nice with it. But I think, well, let's just, I'm going to add one of each to each of the arms. And then we'll take it from there and we'll see. I also have some scotch tape because I'm going to show you. If I can't get these through the beads, so what I'm doing is taking the middle two ropes and I'm going to thread them through my bead. This has a nice big hole, so I'm not needing um, scotch tape for this. You can do them one at a time, but I'm just going to push the bead all the way up to where the square knot is, and I'm going to make another square knot right under it. That'll hold it in place. Like so. Yeah, I think I'm liking that. Maybe I'll leave in a little space and just put three beads on each one. I think that's awesome. I'm going to do that. So because there's three different colors, I think I will use all of the different colors. All right. So the next one's like this medium color. And then there's like a, oops, it's not white, but it's like a creamier color. And I'll do... I'll try to keep the same pattern. So let's see if this will go through. Oh, first, I think I'm going to make a space between. So I'm, I'm going to do my top square knot. See, I don't know if you're going to be able to see. Um, probably like, yeah, maybe like, is this two inches? I might as well get a, I have a um, ruler. I might as well let you know for sure. Yeah, I'll do them two inches. So this is a little approximately two inches finish the square knot and I just want it to stay there so you just have to kind of pull your ropes to make it stay there and see if I can get this little guy on so as you do it your you start to um, the ends of your rope start to fray a little so it gets harder to thread it through another thing I like to do is just bend it and then you can kind of jam it in. But for what I'm going to do, I am I love this technique. You just take a piece of scotch tape. And I'm going to try and do both. So I'm going to take both, both the ends and just roll, make a little shoelace top. Like a little shoelace tip, whatever type thing. Like that. So now I can thread my beads much easier. Boom. It's just easier and anything easier is better for me I like when things are easy peasy finish my square knot and yeah and I think I'm gonna do one more I'm gonna move this back a little you know 
it's not ideal to for filming um, macrame for me. It's hard. Um, and I'm going to put, oh, first we make our top square knot here, approximately two inches from the last one. It looks a little short. Finish the square knot. And I'm running out of string, so I want to make sure that I Maybe I don't need three. See, we're running out of string, but I definitely have enough to finish this. Also, I think the pot could sit right here with the bead. So in other words, when I did this one, I like it when the pot sits at the top so right here is where the pot sat at the end of, of my work. So if I put my little pot in here, you'll see what I mean. The, the rim of the pot is kind of flush with the end of my work. That's how I kind of measure it. And then I put this little decorative guy there and then I gather. So that's what I'm shooting for. And I just have to make sure that I have enough jute left to tie the remaining knots and I think we're gonna so I think I'm gonna stick with this design and try to get this through this last bead and then I'll go off camera and I'll finish the other two arms and I'll show you how I'm gonna put my little pot in here so that it fits perfect yeah I think this is gonna be good now this see let's see how long it is approximately. This could be the top of my work and I think it is going to be. And then I think, all right, let me, I'll be right back. I'm just going to finish the other two and I might even move to a different way to film so that you can see much better. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I changed <laughs> positions. So this is my like, um, this metal thing. It's a wardrobe and I have one of these hooks on here that you can get I got these at the dollar store, but you get them at plant places, and I'm hanging it from here so that I can show you, because it got too long. All right, so I'm going to pull the camera up, but this will be good. I just have to, uh, I'm looking in the viewfinder thing to see where I'm shooting. Okay. What I decided to do was just do two on the arm itself, and then I'm going to put the third bead down so that it'll be around the pot, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Now, hopefully... I could close the door so it's not, I think I might close the door, it's a little distracting. There we go. Now, you know what's going to happen, a dog is going to want to come in. Okay, well you can still <laughs> see, I tried to, anyway, alright. What I want to do though, is because when you make the knots, the two center ropes stay the same length, but the two working ropes get shorter and shorter because every time you tie a knot you use up rope so I'm gonna flip I want to flip from these two which actually have a piece of tape on the bottom from when I so I'm just pulling it I use tape to you know alright so we're gonna flip it so I'm gonna take the two working ropes and put them in the center and I'm gonna use the inside ropes to be my working ropes I'm gonna do a, um, a square knot so I'm just going to use those, the two center ropes to, to be my working ropes now. Oh, Kiwi's going to call me. And I'm just going to make a square knot, again, about two inches from the, from the last bead I made, uh, put. And this way, I'll have a little bit more even ropes. Let's see what I'm, if I'm, so I'm going to come up. There's still a big difference, like there's two that are shorter, but we'll be better, we'll be better off this way. So I'm just going to do that on all the sides. I have to take the two center ones and open them up and then put the two outside ones in the middle. It kind of makes a little, oops, I forgot to pull my tape off. <laughs> um, it kind of makes a little like X pattern. It's kind of cute. It actually, and see the thing about working with this jute twine, it's, it's, a, l a little messier looking too, so I feel like there's not as much pressure to be perfect, which I really try not to be. <laughs> All right, so I'm making, I'm just gonna make a square knot, 
and I switch sides. So see it's like making this little X pattern. I don't know if you can see. I'm going to shoot down a little lower. Um, shooting from the side. I'm going to turn this a little. Aha! Now we're good. Alright, so I just want to keep it even with the other one. So I'm going to finish my square knot right there. Now this is going to be hopefully where the top of the pot is, like I was saying with the purple one. And then we're going to connect, so I'm going to switch sides, so I'm taking the two outside ones, putting them on the inside. Whoop, I forgot to take the tape off. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I haven't filmed in so long, I'm like, I feel like a beginner. So I'm flipping, flipping, and doing, and making a square knot. Approximately even with the other one, and finish it. Alright, now's where kind of the trickiest part of this whole thing. And it took a lot of trial and error for me to figure out. And I'm still not perfect at it. So I have my three arms. Let me just get a little of a... Okay, so you start at the top. We have one, two beads, and a square knot. Now I'm going to take my planter and bring it over and kind of, you know what, I have an empty one. I'm going to do it with, I'm going to grab one that I um, can just use because I don't want to keep mucking with the plant because um, I just uh, transplanted it. All right, so here's my planter. It's like a cute little shape too. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby. It is a two and a half, maybe three inch pot they're calling it. I don't know. But it's like tall. It's really cool. Alright, so what I want to do is kind of have this in here like that. So that's where the rim of the pot, uh, okay, I'm going to move it down a little bit. The rim of the pot is going to go where this last square knot is. Then I want to connect them. So I don't have to go very far. I think I'm going to go... right here. I'm going to tie a square knot to connect these. I take two ropes from one arm and two ropes from the other and you tie a square knot and that will connect them. So it's a, again it's approximately I want to say two inches. I'm going to tie a square knot and I decided to put my last bead because remember I told you I had three colors and three shapes I'm going to put the last bead there, and then it's going to show up on the side of the pot. That's my thought anyway. So let's see if this is looking like... I think it's going to be groovy. All right, we're grooving. I'm grooving. All right, so I need to connect. So see how that connected them? So I still have two left from this one and two left from this one. I'm just turning it a little. So I'm going to take... Just pick which one's facing forward. So I'm going to take two from this one and two from this one. And again, just measure approximately even with the other one I just tied. Approximately right there. I'm so sorry. This is, I maybe can zoom a little. No, I'm going to go down. Okay. Um, and finish it. So I'm just making a square knot. This is all done with square knots. I didn't change anything um, fancy schmancy stuff at all. Just a square knot. But we're getting low on rope, but I think we're going to make it. And then I'm going to take these last two. You take the two closest ones and use those as your center. And then you take the two outside ones and use those as your working cords. And make yourself your last square knot. So this is what I've been doing. I've been doing a lot of plant stuff and kind of making pots that match the macrame. So I'll show you a few at the end. All right, we're in the home stretch. So let me just take my pot, place it in here, and see if it's doing what I think it's going to do. Ooh, this one. Yeah, I think I'm going to I'm going to do it. 
So I'm going to put that last bead here. See if I can, I don't want to use the square one. Get these through without, I can't. I'm going to do that off camera. Well, I'll do it, I'll do it with you. All right, what the heck. Take a piece of scotch tape and the two center ropes and just tape them up so that I can thread them through this bead. It doesn't really take that long, so I, I'm, I don't know why I'm trying to make this quick. I'm going to thread it through, pull it up, and make another square knot. All we have to do is gather at the end, so we, have, we do have enough rope. So I'm very excited this worked. So what it's going to look like, put it in. that bead is going to be up against the pot. Oh my God, where am I shooting? Oh, thank you. That bead is going to be up against the pot. And then we're going to um, just gather at the bottom. So I have plenty to do that. So I'm going to, I'm just going to keep the camera rolling and finish this up with you guys. So um, I'll chat while I'm at it. So yeah, I had an injury. I think it was, I was holding the dog's leash, Ginny, our big, our poodle, and she pulled me off a chair because I was sitting in a chair while the kids were playing ball and I wasn't paying attention. I looked down for a minute and she pulled me and I went over to the side. My, my right arm, I'm zoomed in, sorry. Oh my God. So in other words, I was holding her leash in my right hand and she ran to the left of me. And so it yanked my arm across me and pulled me off the chair. So I landed on my knee, but really what happened was I got, it's called calcific tendinosis or I injured my supraspinatus tendon. It's in your shoulder. I got an MRI and I did not need um, surgery or anything. And it's much better, like look. I can just about put my hand above my head, but I couldn't do that for like six weeks. I was really hurting. I had, I also got something called um, bursitis. So the bursa sacs are something inside us that like protects your tendon from like when it rubs up against the bone I think there are like sacs around the tendon that protect it and mine got inflamed and it's very painful so it was it was rough <laughs> anyway I'm feeling much better but I can feel it and she actually told me I went to physical therapy she actually told me that um, macrame is a good way to kind of do therapy for myself so let me see if I can shoot this um, yeah, so for me to be holding my arm out at this angle and stuff like that, like it, it's, you know, it's a type of, it's, um, she called it some type of therapy. You physical therapists will know <laughs> what I'm talking about. Um, anywho, because she want, they want you to move in the most, like just doing, getting through your natural, um, movements throughout the day. Um, anyway, I'm much better, but I... I was really not doing good for, like I guess, about six weeks. Um, I couldn't really do any crafting. I couldn't even write. Um, and I'm so happy. I feel much better. Um, little by little, I'm starting to do just normal stuff, like blow drying my hair. Have, or, have you guys ever tried brushing your teeth with your opposite hand? Because I'm right-handed. And that was the arm, my shoulder, my right shoulder hurt. Try brushing your teeth with your left hand. <laughs> it's so hard. I'm not really very ambidextrous at all. So, I don't know. I just really, it was very spiritual because I had to stay present and fight through pain and let people make me do things that I didn't really want to do. And, oh boy, it was tough. And I can't imagine when someone has cancer and all the when you really have to fight it and you know anyway it really humbles you when you 
aren't well and makes you realize how blessed you are when you are well. So a lot of good stuff, but yeah, it's no fun. Pain hurts, so I just took off a couple. These are just still tied together, so I'm just untying or um, taking the tape off. All right, we're in the home stretch. So here it is. I want to. Now I'm gonna. I needed just a piece of. Um, I'm gonna get it like about a foot worth of scrap. So I have like a about 12 inches worth of just regular twine because I am gonna do a gathering knot. So we're gonna take this little guy stick them under here and remember I said I wanted the square knot oh, I'm just gonna go up a tiny bit so you can definitely see what I'm doing so the square knot is at the top or the rim of the pot this knot this bead is kinda of sitting right under this lip and then we're gonna gather so I'm just gonna be tying a knot I'm just moving it up a tiny bit because this is just to measure I just want to make sure that I don't want to have to retie it sometimes it takes me several attempts to um, get this measurement right I'm liking the way that looks so I'm going to take it out and I'm going to try oh boy I'm going to just try right here now what you want to do is take this little scrap piece of twine and make a loop and I'm going to put that where my thumb just was holding the spot so weird looking at this like this okay so here's that loop I just made here's the top so you make a loop and there's a short side and a long side so I'm just going to put it on here before I tie this I'm going to measure one more time and I just gather. I'm going to go around maybe five times. One, two, there's Kirby. Three, hi Curb. Hi Jen. Four, five. And I'm just going to hold it there for a sec before what I want to do is thread it through that loop, but I just want to measure because oftentimes, yeah, I'm up a little too high. See how the knot. Wait a minute, you can't see. See how this, I want it up higher. So I'm gonna go a little further down. I'm gonna untie it. See, before I did all the finishing tying, I wanted to make sure I've been here, done this so many times. I think it's like approximately another two inches, kind of like that size. I'm just, and I'm gonna make the little loop in one end and put the loop under my thumb and then I'm going to take the long end there's a the short end and just wrap one two three four I'm going to measure much closer still not exact but I think I'm gonna go with it I think up oh, and you can't say let me zoom out I'm sorry it's much higher but this one's a little wonky I think I'm gonna do it. I think it's it's wonky but I think I'm gonna go with it so what you want to do is take the end that you just wrapped put it through the loop that was under my thumb and then gently pull the short end and it grabs that the long end and I'm gonna just really kind of really hard pull it <clears throat> out and you can get a, ro uh, a root burn but it, it pulls that other loop underneath and I think I'm gonna call it we're going to call it, I'm going to cut off the top part. I'm going to put my plant in there. So let's see how much of this you can actually see. My little plant. I just don't want to break them. I'm going to try and get them in here. 
Tritoscantia is very fragile. It does break. So annoying. Um, but it also propagates really well and so I want to see if I can see I broke it. I just broke that. That's okay. There's still a leaf there. That's why I didn't want to keep going back and forth and back and forth with it. But I think we're good. I think, look, the knot the knot is at the rim of the pot where I wanted it. I have this decorative bead here on the side of the pot which I love. And so now I'm just going to cut the bottom. So it's nice and even and um just usually you can find your shortest one and go there, but I'm just going to go. Maybe I'll keep a couple of these longer ones for um scraps. So let's see. Where can I show you this really cute? I am in love. All right, sorry. Hold on. I think it's the cutest thing ever. Okay, so here's my ring. I have two beads and a third bead here. And that's it. And I kind of like how the jute is a little curly. Sometimes it's curly at the bottom. Um, I like it. It's so rustic looking and I think my plant has plenty of room to grow. So I'm going to come right back and show you a few others that I've done. All right. I'll be right back. Okay, so look. This little hook I had, it's been there, and I've hung a million things from this. But look, it's going to stay right there by this window, and I think it's going to be fine because I don't think they need a ton of light or anything. And it's so cute. You can kind of see how little it is. It's tiny, like compared to, you know, those are a little bit normal size pots. Tiny. And then here's another one I did with I, ha I used way too many beads for this I think I think I'm gonna take it apart but it fits this little like four or five inch and then I put like a tassel I made a beady tassel so I used a, a lot of beads for that I think I'm gonna take it apart but it's super cute so that's one that's the one that started it all with the blue um, macrame cord and then if you come in here this is the Zenden I'm gonna turn and I just hung this one here. This is called Chinese Evergreen. And I forget the official name of it. Something Ruby. I don't know. But it, look at the pink stems. So it came in this gray pot. So I was inspired because I love pink and gray. And so I decided to use pink macrame cord. And I painted some beads gray. It's so like this is charcoal and silver and I see I did the same thing I put a silver one here and then look I hung a little like one of my sugar skull um, button dudes from there and so that hangs right there but it kind of matches the plant right all right so I'm just gonna scan over here this guy I just got him it's uh, some type of a Hoya something, Calyx Splash or something. I'm just trying to let you see the plant itself. But it gets all these tenderly things, and I thought, I want that to be able to climb up the macrame. So this is another one I made. I put one of each there, and then, oh, I did two, two stations of three. And then this pot, I just thought it just needed to be, like the pot, inspired me to make this macrame like this pot might have started the the um the jute because i just thought it was such a rustic looking pot i actually got that pot with a plant um i forget what plant i got it with but anyway and now i love it like i just think it see how like it, it's curly at the bottom um this one is another hoya I don't remember the name of this either, but I think it's called a scarlet something or other because the new leaves come out pink. So I used black jute, which is, I think I got this at um, Michael's. 
and pink and green glass beads because it's green and pink and I put a pink one on the side. I don't love it as much because oh when I painted the um the wooden ring black. Um but you know and it's it's kind of getting dark out. Then this one was a very big hit. Um this is called I'm gonna take it down because I'm I really can't do it. This is my um lemon lime maranta and I have this um, let me move, let me come in here. I just can't film like this, it's awful. The pink pot, which is also cool, it has like a mandala on it. And I love pink and green, so he's been in that pink pot, but then I found this jute, it's green. Let me see if you can see that. I want the light, there we go. Uh, how, you, no, 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 no. Home Depot, I got that. I was with Joe, and that is where I got that. And then I had these gold beads in my stash, and I just thought they, like, I used a gold ring. So that's how I kind of, you know, I think it looks gorge. I think it looks gorge. All right, and then what else did I do? I did another black one. And this is more Trade Escantia in a gray pot. So again, I used all metallic. I painted all these beads, all the different metallic colors that I had, and just used that black jute and gray, like a silver, just a silver plastic pot. Again, because I think it's a square, yeah, it's a square nursery pot in there, and it just fit in this pot perfect, so. But I'm kind of liking, you know, you don't have to just, now this is a traditional, you know, I just did a bunch of square knots and blue glass beads, and this is my philodendron Brazil, which I love, and I think, I think he's going to stay in here, but let me get a better look at him. He's getting so big, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to propagate him soon. And then this is another one I just did, you know, much thicker um, cord. But yeah, you don't have to do it. I think that's it. That's all. Yeah, these two don't have macrame. Um, but yeah, that's it. One, I have one up in my room that I actually bought at like Ross. That's a double. And I don't know how to make doubles. So um, that's it, you guys. I want you guys to use your imaginations. Um, and use what you have. And you guys can get jute anywhere. Learn how to make a square knot, and there you go. You can just use a little um, split ring for the top, loop it around, and there you go. Look what a cute little guy. This is so cute. I'm just so happy. It makes me happy. All right, you guys. That's it. I hope I post this. <laughs> Thanks for watching.